All right, Shalom. Shalom. I want to start off with giving all praises, honor, and glory to, to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakhah Kadash, the born to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and salutations to the brothers to the four corners of the earth, preaching this word and also laboring in this word in truth, love, and sincerity, and make blessings fall upon the houses of the one third. And you know, me and a brother just, you know, came together in the spirit. And um, hey, the spirit hopped on me to go into the um, ancient torture methods uh, of the Middle Ages, you know. And um, you know, pretty much these these torture methods, you know, that Esau Edom came up with, these same devices that he is going to use on us today, man. Okay, he's going to be using these different different methods to what? To try to have us denounce Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. All right. Now we know some of us are going to be martyrs, right? But that's going to going to be in different ways. Now we know some of us are going to um get our get beheaded, right, for the witness and testimony of Yahweh Shai, you know. But being tortured, that's going to come down the line too, because Esau wants to do uh, us the most harm, and for us to denounce Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai, man. That's all. Kind of, you know, and it just really shows you the 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 mindset of these uh, of these Edomites, man. The Most High mm -hmm. created them to be on the left hand side, to be uh, perfectly wicked, man. Yeah. You know, and their mind just thinks of, uh, uh, of wickedness, man. Yeah. Gruesome, gruesome, gruesome. Yeah. You see, because when you see images like, images like this on the screen, man, this shit is gruesome, man. Yeah, yeah boy. You know? And when you think of like, you know, I know some of you people out there that like horror movies. So when you think of these different movies like Saul, these are thoughts of an Edomite, man. This is how they think, okay? How bad we could torture this person. Let's see how long they can endure this torture. You know what? Okay, they they, they didn't get past this one. Let's try another one. Yeah. You see, when you watch these different flicks, man, it just shows you that how, how sick and demonic that these Edomites think, man. You know? But, um... You know, we're, we're just, we're, we're doing this lesson because, hey, it might come down to the time where, hey, you know, you'll probably be tortured, you see? But you got to uh, continue to have that faith in your how about you have a shot, see? And that whatever may happen to you, you know, you can still remain in the spirit. You got to, uh, you know, pray to him and ask him to give you that strength that you may be able to endure you know, the different things that's going to happen to you, man. Because things will happen. All right, this is not no road you think you're just gonna walk down and everything is gonna be cool and you're just going you just gonna slide to the kingdom. Nah, it ain't that type of thing, you know. Okay. So um go to the first Matthew one. Yep, Matthew ten twenty eight, yep. Alright, this is the book of Matthew, chapter ten, verse twenty eight. Right. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Right. Fear not them which kill the body, man. You see? Because um, we ain't supposed to fear these people, man. You see? And I, and all they could do is kill the body. You know? That's it. See? But they can't kill the spirit. Go ahead. But are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him, which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. T Hebrews 10 and 31. Right? <clears throat> and who was able to do that? Yahweh, man. Okay, the Heavenly Father, man. He is the one that can uh, kill the body and kill the soul, man. You see, he could judge you on this side. Have you go back up to the judgment seat, right? And then come back in what? A uh, paralyzed body. Yep. You see, uh, uh, a body that's uh, uh, subject to dis diseases, demons, just bugged out. You see? But all Esau can do is what? He could just harm you physically, man. That's all he can do. See? But we're not supposed to fear him. We are to fear to get how up Yep. There we go. Come Hebrews 10 and 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. Right. See, that's who the hands you don't want to fall into, man. You don't want to fall into the hands of the living power, man. Okay. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. You see, but it just told you in Matthew 10, 28. Can you bring it back up? Right. It just told you in Matthew 10, 28. What? And fear not them which kill the body. See, and that's all he can do, man. Oh, yeah. Con, con, and and this is particular. I just looked at the uh, the the, scri the scripture right above. It says, okay. "What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light, and what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops." Because when you do this thing, you make yourself a prey, and so fear not what can possibly be done to you mm -hmm. by Esau Edom. You know what I'm saying? Because some of us are gonna go through uh, tribulations and such, mm -hmm. but rather continue preaching this gospel, man. 
That's why I like what uh, Elder Malcolm says in his videos, you know, um, making their lives a living sacrifice, you know, risking their lives to preach this gospel. Now more so, more than ever, man. Yep. You know, and that's completely true, man, because they uh, they coming down on us, man. Right. What was, what was yeah. I saying? Go back. Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13. Yep. All right. 13 and 6. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 6. Mm -hmm. uh, so that we may boldly say. Slug here, slug here. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Slug here. Go ahead. Uh, so that we may boldly say, Yahweh is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. See, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. See, we know that the Heavenly Father through His only begotten Son, that He is our helper, helper, man, right? He is our refuge. He is our strength. And we got to truly believe that, okay? Because without them, we through. We ain't no way we ain't, ain't no way we making it. See, ain't no way we are, we are even able to stand before this devil to uh, 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 what he's going to do unto us or what he uh, wants to do unto us. Right? So what? We got to say that we may boldly say. See, you got to have confidence in that. Okay? But you got to also, you got to ultimately, you got to truly believe it. See? Con, like the bro said, th there's nothing that we can do without Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You know, um, much less stand against Esau, but I mean, we wouldn't even know up from down, left from right, man. You know, two thirds groping in, in, in uh in noonday as if in darkness. You know, don't know they left from they right. So you know, it's a, it's a um, it's a wonderful thing that he gave us this gospel and to even be able to understand this. So how much more should we trust in his power that he can save us, uh, or or, or keep the spirit on us through these things that we may have to endure. You know, mm -hmm. and and of course Jacob's trouble, all is gonna have to endure that. You know, right, right. But only elect shall be saved. Yep. Well, yep. Yeah. So. Um, Sirach forty-one and three. Okay, Sirach forty-one and three. All right. Uh, fear not. This this is the book of Ecclesiasticus or Sirach, uh, chapter forty-one, verse three. Fear not the sentence of death. Remember them that have been before thee and that come after, for this is the sentence. Of Yahweh over all flesh. Right. See, so it says, "Fear not the sentence of death. Remember them that have been before thee, and that come after." So now, when you go to Romans fifteen and four, it says, "What? Uh, everything is written aforetime is written for our learning." Okay. Right. Now, um, you can pull it up real fast. Now, when you think about about that, right? Where in the scriptures do you see this? Where you see accounts where you know our our kin or our brothers being tortured by Esau, man, right? The book of Maccabees, you see? Uh, so that was written for, our, oh, you got it. Yeah, uh, Romans uh, 15 and four, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Right, you see? So the same things that, you know, our brothers experience, experienced, some of us have to experience, okay? but. Um, through the patience and comfort of the scriptures, we uh, might, Salaki says that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope, right? Because when you go into the whole story, you know, the brethren, I think it was the last brethren, right? He knew that they was going to come back and that they were doing the right thing of, you know, basically die, dying, you know, uh, for the Lord, you see? Okay. Not transgressing in, uh, uh, not transgressing his ways, okay. you see? All because this devil, right? I believe it was um um was it Antiochus? True. I, I'm we're about to get the account. I believe it was Antiochus, right? But it was it was one of them Edomites. But they all because they wanted them to eat pork, right? They they tortured our brother. You see, but they knew that you know that they were doing the right thing and denouncing of, of what they wanted them to do to go against that go against their power. Okay, so that's why we got to look upon these scriptures and. You know, hey, they were written for time for our learning, man. We must read them, meditate upon them, and and, and understand them. Con, you know, and that's why the scriptures tell us to eat the roll because we have to ingest this. We have to take this into our being, you know, because some brothers' faith is going to be tested to the extreme mm -hmm. when they get into these situations. 
You know, that's why I said through patience and comfort of the scriptures that we might have hope because the scriptures do not say in vain that wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of dying times and strength of salvation because some brothers are going to go through these tortures, man, mm -hmm. you know, and they're going to need to be fully grounded in the scriptures in order to remember what well, these brethren went through this and they endured and, and we know that according to the scriptures, they, they got a reward in heaven, man. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to have to be able to remember those things. And I pray that all you sin sincere brethren, as well as me and the Ak here, if we have to go through that, uh, that the most I put the spirit on us to endure and to not blaspheme, to not denounce, to not do what the enemy wants us to do, you know, so that we because we know there's a greater reward in the kingdom of heaven, man. You know, that's right. That's right. So um, read that uh, Sirach 41 again. I'm right. trying to find a preset real quick. Ecclesiastic is 41. And uh, three, fear not the sentence of death. Remember them that have been before thee and that come after. For this is the sentence of Yahweh over all flesh. You know, and that's exactly right. And um, I had another precept that I could go ahead and pull out while the brother's getting something. This is, I got it pulled on my, on my sword right here. This is Revelation 2 verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. You know, and so that that rev that revelation uh, that uh, tribulation ten days represents a complete number of days. You know, so be faithful until the end. You know, until death, man. And, and Yahweh Bashem Yahweh will give thee a crown of life. You know, like it talks about the um the ones that that died in in uh, Hamashiach. They will be headed for the testimony of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Uh, being raised up and given those white robes, you know, they're going to be deferred. The dead and the, let's get that first. Let's get that water bro's doing it. The dead. And... All right, first Thessalonians 4 and uh, 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. With the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God of power and the dead in Hamashiach shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet Yahweh in the air. And so shall we ever be with our power, man. You know, so that's just th these are some examples of scriptures that that can give you comfort, you know, during the time of your tribulation. If you keep your eye on the prize, if you keep your eye single, you know, they can remind you, hey, look, man, there's there's a, a, a greater reward that comes um, with enduring and, and perishing in, in, in uh, this truth than to uh, than to turn, uh, let's say, to, to switch sides to save this uh, this flesh, which is going to die anyway. You know, there's really nothing else for you, man. If you if you were to save your save yourself alive. In this uh this this decaying flesh, it it wouldn't benefit you, man, because you're just gonna to be destroyed anyway, and you're gonna have uh, that shame of having known the truth and dying the death of a two third man. So hey, bros, just you know keep enduring, man. Still looking for that precept. Right, right. I'm looking for the. I'm trying to think. I'm looking for the ones um that speak on which of our fathers um. Oh yeah, yeah. Who. Never trust me. Yeah, that's it. It's right there, yeah. I believe this is it. Or uh oh. and the Lord never perished. Okay, they ain't trying to give it to me. Yeah, like it's whoever trusted in the Lord, yeah, yeah. Let me get it for you. I know what the brother's saying or what scripture he's thinking about. Yeah. 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 Okay. Ecclesiastic is two and 10. Look at the generations of old and see, That's right. did ever any trust in Yahweh and was confounded <laughs> or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Whom did he ever despise that called upon him? You want to break it down, bro? Fine, yeah, and that's what I was looking for, man. You know, and our fathers and our fathers that called upon the Lord, man, and they trusted in the Lord, man. 
The Lord didn't just leave, uh, let them go, man. Look, look at King David, man. You know, King David was called upon the Lord in the time of need. He didn't just let King David get overtook by his enemies, things like that. God. You know? So when they, you know, they trusted in the Heavenly, they trusted in the Heavenly Father, right? And they needed Yahweh, needed Yahweh. He came through. You see? Hey, yo, hey, the Lord will come through, man. You see? The Lord won't forsake you. Uh -huh. Yeah, like I said, did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? You know, because the fear of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. You know, whom did he ever despise that called upon him? When you come in the right spirit, the Most High is not going to despise you, man. You know, you know, like even if, you know, some of us do have to die in this faith, you know, we understand uh, through the Most High knowledge that it's a part of his design, man. That's right. You know? Yeah. And so the men of the Lord who truly have a grasp on this are not going to feel bitter towards the Most High. If they do have to perish, man, you know. Yeah, but if you die, die in the Lord, or die for the Lord, you be part of you be part of the first fruits, man. Kind, okay, okay. You know, so that that's a beautiful thing alone. Yeah. So we can um. All right, so let's get into the uh, article. All right. This one. Uh, this yeah, one. Yeah. So what's right. that one called? Okay. So this one is the eight most painful torture devices of the Middle Ages. So we're going to start on this one. Okay. Since from the dreaded rack to the head crusher, t take a look at the most grueling and painful torture devices of the Middle Ages. Torture devices of the Middle Ages, the saw. Yeah, that's look, the first one. Look at that shit, man. Look, look at that shit, boy. Yeah. Hang you up down and slice you from the, slice you from the groin, probably all the way down to the skull, man. Oof. And yeah, man, and then your brain, you know, the nerve center, you gonna feel every bit of that, man. Yeah, man, that's sick, bro. Okay, so, trying to read most of this real quick. So before the saw was given its perfunction, perfunctory, perfunctory roll to slice perfunctory through. Perfunctory roll, yep, yeah, the water. Roll to slice through wood and thick material. It was used to slice through humans for torture or execution. The Damn. victim would be held upside down, allowing the blood to rush to their head, and then the torturer will slowly start slicing them between their legs. With the blood contained in the head, the victim will remain con conscious throughout most of the slicing, often only passing out or dying when the saw hit their midsection. Fucking wicked. Man. Fucking wicked. You know, and then, and, and it's crazy because it says that, now, you know, hey, I don't know how true this is, but it says that that was the first uh, reason that the saw was created as a torture device, man. And then the secondary method uh, thing that they chose to use it for was to cut wood. Oh, they said that was the first. Yeah, it says it says before it was given its role to slice oh, through wood man. and thick material, it was used mm -hmm. to slice through humans. So that was the whole reason Esau created this shit. You know, you know they they devised wickedness, man, and ways to just to jack you up, man. All right, I guess I'll read this next one. Uh, middle medieval torture device: the breast ripper or the spider. So this is said it was for women who were accused of adultery, abortion, or other crime. They were subjected to the painful torture of the breast ripper or spider. As the name suggests, the claw-like device, which ended in spikes, was heated and then used to rip off or shred a woman's breasts. The spider was a variant attached to the wall instead of clamped onto a woman's breast. Right. So lawfully, what they were supposed to do with an adulterous woman or an adulterous man, right, was pertaining to the woman. This shit is supposed to get stoned, man. Yep. That's a stoner. It, man. All the extra shit they doing is irrelevant. You see? He's just supposed to be, get stoned, man. That'll put enough fear in the people right there. Yep. All right. You want to keep going? Yep. The ultimate torture device is the rack. Probably most commonly known torture device from the Middle Ages, the rack was a wooden platform with rollers at both ends. The victim's hands and feet were tied to each end, and the rollers would be turned, stretching the victim's body to uncomfortable lengths. Damn. Damn. So, so, so oh, what they're yeah, doing was just stretching their body out to a rip. Yeah, basically. That's what, that's what that was doing? That's what it looked like. Oh, so lucky. Would be turned. Yeah, yeah. That's... Yeah, so the so if you look right here, the way this is made, the rope is tied to the middle one, and they would spin it right here. You see the yeah, lever, yeah, yeah. and then they would tie both ends of the person's body, you to know, your limb, with to your this. Limbs yeah, to you, yeah, basically you got ripped up, man. Painful torture device, the knee splitter. That look crazy. 
Used frequently during the Spanish Inquisition, the knee splitter naturally was used to split a victim's knee. The device was built from two spike wood blocks with a screw at the back and was clamped to the front and back of the knee. One turn of the screw and hey, presto, a knee was easily and painfully crippled. It was also used on other parts of the body. So they just shank through your knee with this thing. That's a, like a Like a vice with spikes on it. All right. head crusher. All right, what's that? It's the middle age. All right, okay. The hair crusher. It says, uh, extremely invent inventive with names. The hair crusher, much like the, bre the, like the breast ripper and knee splitter, did exactly what it was called. The chin sat on, on the bottom rung, the head under the cap, and the turning screws would result in very disgusting death. Brains seeping out of the pop. Brain seeping out of the popped eye sockets, crushed teeth and bones, and mutilated, mutilated remains. <laughs> so, it's niggas, he's a freak, man. He's a sicko, man. Yep. You see? Hey, but look, this is where they get this, this shit from the Saw movie from, man. Yeah, that's true. Ew. The will, most commonly used in Germany during the Middle Ages, the will was a favorite form of, form of execution. The victim was tied to the wheel on the ground and wooden cross pieces were placed under each major joint, wrists, ankles, hips, shoulders, and knees. After the pleasantries were observed, the torturer would start hammering the cross pieces with heavy iron enhanced wheel following the severe bashing the victim's limbs or braided into the spokes of the wheels and displayed to the general public until the victim died. Come on, bro. You see? Crazy. Hey, but they would do the same thing during slavery, right? Or, or not even just in, in slavery. Um, um was about the sixties, the fifties, the forties. Hey, they would torture Jake. Yep. They would put you to a stake, right? So all the eating mice can sit there and watch you. They would burn you. They would cut off different members of your uh, 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 your body, right? Mm -hmm. And let you hang there and be as a public display while you as dying out or bleeding out. Yep. So this devil is you see the same cycle of his tactics continuing. Yeah. Through time. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, they made a game out of it. That's where you get the word picnic from, where they would pick a picnic, nigga yo, yo. and they would kill your ass and they would make a damn outing of the shit, you know? That they're eating watermelon, taking fucking pictures for postcards and shit. That was they that was they pastime, man. It was killing Jake, man. Yep. The wooden horse. The wooden horse uh, the wooden horse, the wooden pony, or the Spanish donkey is the name given to an extremely painful torture device used throughout history. Particularly during the American colonial period and medieval times, there are three variations of the device. However, the principle and design is the same. The wooden device is triangular in shape and angled, often sharpened at the top. The victim is forced to straddle the triangular horse, placing their full body weight on their vulva, with additional weights added to their ankles to keep them from falling off. Needless to say, the additional weight will pull the victim's entire body down, severely injuring their crotch and sometimes even slicing it in half, making it one of the most brutal torture devices ever. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. So, yeah, this top part right here is sharpened. And then they put, you know, they make them sit on it. Then they put weights Ooh, so on their legs. Slowly crush them through. Yeah, slowly slicing and, and chopping up their genitals and all type of shit, man. You know, and um, let me see, man. Let me get the scripture real quick. Because, man, they love blood. You know what I'm saying? Love it. They love it, man. This is Ezekiel uh, 35. And um, I'm going to start at, I guess I could start at 5. Mm -hmm. Because that was had a perpetual hatred. You want me to say, do you want me to start before that or just right there? Uh, you get a point. Uh, you got a point beforehand, you could. I'm going to just start at three. Yeah. All right. 35 and three. Ezekiel 35 and three. And say, this is talking about Mount Seir, which is Esau, Edom. And say unto it, thus say if Yahweh power, behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out mine hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. All right. And I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am Yahweh. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred, and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Therefore, as I live, saith Yahweh power, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Now, this wasn't 
uh, this ain't just necessarily talking about um, the the judgment that's coming to you Edomites, but it just goes to show you that they didn't hate blood. Not only did they not hate it, they loved it. They loved blood, you know. Um, and I guess I'll go ahead and knock this precept out too. And the point that I'm going into is that they have a perpetual hatred. Perpetual hatred. Man. Yeah. You see, so hey, from the womb, it already been that uh, uh in between between each other, man. Between that enmity between Jacob and Esau from the womb. Okay, Esau representing um so-called white people, majority, right? And then Jacob representing you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, Seminole Indians, West Indians, and Haitians. Okay. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so that's why, you know, you see us uh or you see how cruel that they treat you. You see? That's part of the reason that perpetual or that's you no know, a big part of the reason that perpetual hatred, man. God. Why? Because we got the uh we got the blessings, man. Yeah, the blessings of the Heavenly Father, man. You know, and uh spiritually Esau, even though he sold his birthright, he still felt like he should have got them blessings. Yep, man. yep, he still yep. He felt like they were still rightfully his. You know, and hey man, it just shows you that the it just shows you the the like the scriptures say, man, his 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 soul that is within him is not upright within him, man. You know, because rather than taking the L and just saying, you know what, I sold it, hey, I can't even be mad. He want to bitch up and get mad at you for something he got rid of, yep. you know, or like when he killed Jake and then his judgment is shown to him that it has to come back uh, upon him. And then now all of a sudden it's too much for him to handle or he the victim. And oh, why we can't we just get along just like uh, just like Cain, man, his, his saying his judgment was too much for him to bear. That's right. Yep. Psalms um, 70. 73 and 6 therefore pride compasses them about as a chain violence covereth them as a garment and that's in, in esau edom is the so is the most violent uh nation on the planet earth man mm. and, and as as depicted through these different torture devices man that's right that's right you know so going with the judas cradle you see this is similar to the wooden horse the judas cradle cradle was a pyramid shaped and sharpened device on which a victim was lower Via ropes as the victim was lowered, the device would slowly tear open their anus. Wow. That's, that's fucking wicked, man. You see? Like, who thinks of shit like that? Volva or uh, scrotum. Though the device is often attributed to the Spanish Inquisition, there is evidence that it existed before this time as part of carnival sideshows. That's some bullshit, bro. That's just. And you know a lot of this shit they ain't do nothing but um they made this for Jake, man. You already know. They made this for to do stuff for, to Jake, man. That's right. Go oh, oh, uh okay, so click on the uh the um most gruesome medieval ones. Cause that was just show the eight. This one. Right. And ones we already seen, you could just we're gonna, we're gonna roll right past. Alright, we already saw that one. See they got the stocks. That's the one I um, believe you was putting your arms through. Yeah. Right? Um you would be like bent over kind of. Yep. Yeah, the stocks and the gallows. Yeah. Wooden horse. We already saw that. Yeah. Skull's bridle. Skull's bridle. 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 It says, this man's like head and closes device was a terrible public humiliation tool from medieval times, also known as, as witch's bridle, a brain's bridle, or brain's. This torture device was usually used on a woman that was accused of being loud, rude, or common scolds. Often those women were also under suspicion of witchcraft. So what's the... We need that today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It ain't like it's painful to just make their ass shut the hell up. Hold on, let's read it. It says, so Go ahead. No, it says the device was used to stop them from speaking and prevent them spreading gossips or scolds. Or to enchant people. people. <laughs> Skull's bridle has an iron muzzle held by an iron frame that was made to fit around the head. A two inches long and one inch broad metal harness went inside the mouth Ooh. of the woman and pressed down her tongue, making her unable to speak. Some of the souls, some of the souls brittle bridles. Bridles here. Um, also had a bell attached on the top so that the punished person could attract more attention while walking around in public places and that, caused, that caused even greater humiliation that don't sound like it's too, <laughs> hey, it ain't killing them they ain't bleeding yeah. some of these women need that they shit, need that shit. Hey. they could they want attention they most of goddamn women need that shit yeah yeah man. especially <clears throat> jake women 
All right, the Iron Maiden. It, no, it's not the famous heavy metal band, but the medieval torture device that has the same name. The Iron Maiden is probably one of the most famous torture devices, mostly because of its wide usage in pop culture. The original Iron Maiden, Isern Jungfrau in, in German, was made sometime around the 14th century in the German town of Nuremberg, and its design, and its design reminded of an Egyptian mummy, mummy sarcophagus. The Iron Maiden is an iron cabinet that opens to reveal a spike-covered interior. It's shaped to fit an average person inside. It is said that it was used for slow and painful executions. Mm -hmm. Most of the stories concerning the Iron Maiden were invented in the 19th century by a man called Johann Philipp Seibenkees. He claimed that the Iron Maiden was first used on August 14, 1515 for the execution of a corn forger. Today, several Iron, Iron Maidens from the 19th century can be seen in museums around the world, but none of them were used as actual torture devices. Right. So you could just scroll down with the pictures of the next ones, you know, just scroll through them. Yeah, pillory. Right. So you know, four. basically there's just different, uh, you know, torture devices that they would use uh, like going through. See? And hey, Esau got so many different imaginations that he want to use against this man. You can't even... No, think about how much shit he got. So just imagine, uh, imagine what he got now. Right. You know. So um, let's go on to uh the Maccabees brothers. Okay. Right. <clears throat> right. So we're gonna show you just example. You know, of the uh, you know, of the seven brothers in the book of Maccabees, not the Maccabees brothers. Slocky. It's the seven brothers in the book of Maccabees. Okay. So this is the book of Maccabees, uh, chapter 7, verse 1. And it came to pass that seven brethren with their mother were taken and compelled by the king against the law to taste swine's flesh and were tormented with scourges and whips. Right, so the, like we said before, this is going back to swine's flesh. See, all because they wanted them to eat the pig, they were going to torture these brethren. So how much more now? You see, as they try to get us to den denounce Yahweh, by Hashem Yahushai, huh. right? See if I can get an image of this scourge. Yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah, no, they're, they're going to image right there. But here goes a scourge, you know, and they talk about, and they, they kind of depicted this in that movie, Passion of the Christ, which we know, now damn Edomite that was in that movie. But they kind of showed this, this, uh, this, the, this torture uh, tool, and this is what they was beating them with, you know? It's a tool, and here it shows the tool with sharp stones on it, you know. And these were ripped through the flesh, you know. They had hooks and, uh, you know, leather and these different things, and they would rip up your flesh, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's why it says scourges and whips. Verse 2, but one of them that spake first said thus, What wouldst thou ask or learn of us? We are ready to die rather than to transgress the laws of our fathers. Right, that's the mindset you got to have, man. Okay, you got to be ready to, you know, die for the Lord. Uh, yeah, it was like, what y'all what interrogate? What y'all basically, what you want to know? We trying to, man, we ready to die, man. Verse 3. Then the king, being in a rage, commanded pans and cauldrons to be made hot, which forthwith being heated, he commanded to cut out the tongue of him that spake first and to cut off the utmost parts of his body. The rest of his brethren and his mother looking on. Right, you see, so now he's starting to cut off limbs. Yeah. You see, trying to make an example, like you know what? Okay, you you don't want you want to play games? All right, well let's see how long you can let's see if you can endure this. Let's see if this can uh, compel one of you brothers to eat this swine's flesh. Now, when he was thus maimed, and all his members, and he commanded them him being yet alive to be brought to the fire and to be fried in the pan. Mm -hmm. And as the vapor of the pan was for a good space dispersed, they exhorted one another with the mother to die manfully, saying thus, mm -hmm. uh, Yahweh power looketh upon us, and in truth have comfort in us, mm -hmm. as Moses in his song, which witnessed to their faces, declared, saying, and he shall be comforted in his servants. So when the first was dead after this manner, they brought the second to make him a mocking stock. And when they had pulled off the skin of his head with the hair, they asked him, 
Wilt thou eat before thou be punished? Right. So he's already scout now. I'm talking about, okay, so now you want to eat. You want to eat before we do the rest of these things to you? Throughout every member of thy body? But he answered in his own language and said, no. I Meaning la'a. La'a. No. Kind. <laughs> Wherefore? The Hebrew. The Hebrew. Kind. You see? Oh, and this king that he's this, they, uh, that's doing this, this is King Antiochus, man. An Edomite. Can be traced back to the Edomites. Kind. Wherefore he also received the next torment in order as the as the former did. It just goes to show you, man. You know, the, these brothers and their mother realized, man, saving this little feeble life wasn't gonna wasn't gonna do anything, man. It wasn't gonna benefit them. Mm -hmm. Like we read earlier, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of Yahweh Power, man. Verse nine. And when he was at the last at the last gasp, he said, "Thou like a fury takest us out of this present life." But the king of the world shall raise us up, who have died for his laws unto under, unto everlasting life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have a shot, right? <clears throat> Let me read that yep. again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Come. Yep, yeah, Verse I'm watching shot, yep. Yeah. After him was the third made a mocking stock. And when he was required, he put out his tongue, and that right soon, holding forth his hands manfully, and said courageously, These I had from heaven. And for his laws, I despise them. And from him, I hope to receive them again. But basically, he's like, man, I, you can take take all this, man. Take it all away, man. You know, mm -hmm. I got these from the most high. And for, and for his law's sake, you can take them away, man. Fuck these hands, basically. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. In so much that the king and they that were with him marveled at the young man's courage. For that he nothing regarded the pains. Now, when this man was dead also, they tormented and mangled the fourth in like manner. And when he was ready to die, he said thus, It is good, being put to death by men, to look for hope from Yahweh, to be raised up again by him. As for thee, thou shalt have no resurrection to life, damn Edomite. Damn devil, right? He told him straight. Yeah, he, yeah you ain't gonna get no resurrection to life, devil. Kind. Afterward, they brought the fifth also and mangled him. Then looked he unto the king and said, Thou hast power over men, thou art corruptible. Right, now we read in Matthew 10 and 28, uh, Fear not them which can kill the body, man. Kind. You see? And they're showing that they do not fear them. Kind. Thou doest what thou wilt, yet think not that our nation is forsaken of the Most High. Right, the nation of Israel, man. Kind. You see? The Lord didn't forsake his people. But abide a while and behold his great power. Now he will torment thee and thy seed. <laughs> and that's right, man. You Edomites, you so-called white people, you're going into slavery for a thousand years in the kingdom of heaven, and then you're going to be wiped off the face of the planet Earth, man. That's right, right. And, yep. and the slavery and the different, all these torture devices and these different things that you did to Jake, man, it's going to pale in comparison, man. You're going to receive double the cup that was poured out, man. All right, let me get a priest. Let me get a priest real quick to back that up. Huh. One time, one time. In the book of Lamentations 4, verse 21, it says, Rejoice, be glad, O daughter of a daughter of Edom that dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee, and thou shalt be drunken and shall make thyself naked. Thy, the punishment of thy iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thy iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. Con, so you Edomites, man. As the brother said, this is Antiochus. And man, you know, y'all have much, y'all have much worse things that y'all are gonna do to Jake in the time of Jacob's trouble. It tells us it's gonna be a time such as never has been on the planet Earth. That's right. So man, not only double these these horrendous things that we read and that we've seen, it's gonna be double what you have coming in the future, man. So get it in while you can, man. And you rejoice, know, oh, rejoice, oh, daughter, be glad. Glad. Hey, the cup gonna pass through, man, <laughs> and it's gonna be a bitter cup, man. You think you ain't going to drink it. Most high going to force it down your damn throat. Mm -hmm. You're going to choke on it. We're going to pick it up and make you drink it again, man. That's right. After him also, they brought the six who being ready to die said, be not deceived without cause. For we suffer these things for ourselves, having sinned against our power. Therefore, marvelous things are done unto us. Right. So they knew, right? So they knew that, you know, the things that was coming upon them that, you know, that they in some lifetime, form or fashion, that they have sinned against their power. That's why we always talk about 
uh, reincarnation or regeneration. Okay. You see? Kind of, you know, and that's a that's a that's a good mindset to have to be reminded of when you go through things where hey, I must have did something right. to deserve this. You yep. know, yeah. <clears throat> Verse 19, but think not thou that takest in thy hand to strive against the most high, that thou shalt escape unpunished. Like we were just going into. Man. And we always tell you devils that y'all y'all not gonna escape unpunished, man. Okay. You see, um um You got one? Yeah, I think I got one. Alright, I got one. Um I got the book of second. Let's see if we're looking for the same thing. No, I got one. Second Thessalonians. Alright, second Thessalonians. We gotta pull it up. Hey, I'm about to have a pull it right now. Second Thessalonians. Okay. To read this one. One and six. It says, Seeing it is a righteous thing with the most high to recompense tribulations to them that trouble you. God. That's right. And then this is another precept. It's a righteous thing with the most out of recompense tribulation unto you. Because y'all will say it's unrighteous for the for the patience and the faith of the saints to be waiting and hoping for them that, that have uh, led us into captivity to go into captivity. Right. Y'all look at us like, oh, that ain't, that's not God. That's not, that's not love. God is love, brethren. We're all going to know, you know, your ass is going into captivity for what you did to us, man. It's biblical. Kind. According to the scriptures, Jeremiah 49 and 12. But thus say if Yahweh, behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunk it. So we drunk of the cup, you yeah. see? We was punished for going off from the most highest law, statutes, and commandments and being harlots uh, spiritually, man. Yep. And art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of it. That's right. Like the brother was saying, man, y'all going to have to drink that cup. Ain't no way around it. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, let's see here. All right, second Maccabees 7 and 19 again, but, th but think not thou that takest in hand to strive against the Most High, that thou shalt escape unpunished. 20, but the mother was marvelous above all and worthy of, of honorable memory. For when she saw her seven sons slain within the space of one day, she buried with good courage because of the hope that she had in the Lord. Right, and like we always mentioned, a woman back then carried herself with uh, morals, dignity, okay? Things that a lot of these women don't carry today. Hey, man, imagine a black woman today, man, or whatever tribe she is from. You know what she would have told her sons? You know what? I need to save yourselves and just taste the pork. Just eat a little bit like you said. Just try it, okay, so you can continue to live. No, not this mother. This mother was on, uh, on board with her sons, man, right? In the spirit, okay, as they were, okay, not to go against their power. You see? That's why I said it says what, man? She had good courage, okay? She wasn't trying to persuade her sons to, to taste that swine, man, right? She's an honorable woman that held herself with dignity. Saying, you know what? No, go ahead, bro. Let's go end up saying it. Verse 21. Yea, she exhorted every one of them in her own language. Oh, see? See, just... Filled with courageous spirits and stirring up her womanish thoughts with a manly stomach, she said unto them, I cannot tell you how came I cannot tell how you came into my womb. She said what? I cannot tell how you came into my womb. Uh-huh. For I neither gave you breath nor life. Neither was it I that formed the members of every one of you. Right, and she was already on a back then even at them times the woman was on a higher frequency, man, on a higher vibration. And they knew that life came from uh, uh, the Heavenly Father, man. Right. Not nothing of themselves, man. Right. This is a cut to y'all uh, talking about y'all are creators and shit. Right. You ain't create nothing, man. You an incubator, man. That's right. You ain't even right. carry the seed. You know what I mean? And they don't even know that role to a T like they should know. Right. You know? All right. But doubtless, the creator of the world who formed the generation of man and found out the beginning of all things will also of his own mercy give you breath mm -hmm. and life again mm -hmm. as you now regard not to uh to your own not your own selves for his law's sake mm -hmm. so you dying for the law statutes and commandments of your high and your shot 
Now Antiochus, thinking himself despised and suspecting it to be a reproachful speech, whilst the youngest was yet alive, did not only exhort him by words, but also assured him with oaths that he would make him both a rich and a happy man if he would turn from the laws of his father, and that also he would take for him take him for his friend and trust him with affairs. See, you saw all he's trying to give somebody some shit, yeah. you see, to forsake their power, right? What do you think about this whole entertainment world? You see, sports world, you know, the movie industry world, whatever it is. What do we, what do they tell Jake? And we'll give you riches. We'll give you everything you want. Here, just, just, just uh, promote this. You know, make your people be focused on this instead of, you know, uh, getting themselves back together and to know who they are. You see, make uh, push adultery, push murder, push uh, 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 adultery. You see, push all these different things to keep them on a low, wicked vibration. Kind, kind. And hey, the same with the 501c3 uh, 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 tax exempt, man. You know, y'all take that and y'all can't preach uh, the full gospel, man. Right, yo. You know, you took a payoff, man. All right. Uh, but when the young man would in no case hearken unto him, the king called his mother and exhorted her that she would counsel the young man to save his life. And when she had exhorted her, when he had exhorted her with many words, she promised him that she would counsel her son. But she bowing herself toward him, laughing the cruel tyrant to scorn, spake in her country tongue or her country language on this manner, being Hebrew. O my son, have pity upon me that bear thee nine months in my womb and gave thee suck three years and nourished thee and brought thee up into this age and endured the troubles of education. I beseech thee, my son, look upon the heaven and the earth and all that is therein and consider that the Most High made them of things that were not, and so was mankind made likewise. Fear not this tormentor. And but that's what we keep going back to. Fear not this tormentor. Fear not the people that's going to be doing these things unto us. Uh, but being worthy of thy brethren, take thy death, that I may receive thee again in mercy with thy brethren. Ooh, see? While she was yet speaking these words, the young man said, Whom wait ye for? I will not obey the king's commandment, but I will obey the commandment of the law that was given unto our fathers by Moses. And thou hast been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews. And thou that hast been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews shall not escape the hands of power. Right, so when this devil come back, man, right, we're going to, that devil's going to get it, man, Antiochus, man. Okay, him and everybody was all around him. All you devils are going to get it. But in particular, I know brothers want your ass on the platter. Antiochus, <laughs> man. Because you was a wicked ass king, man. Yeah. You see? For we suffer because of our sins. And though the living Lord be angry with us a little while for our chastening and correction, yet shall he be at one again with his servants. See? Hey, hey and what? We, we say this all the time, man. You see, even though that we're going through what we're going through, okay, we know it's for our, uh, our disobedience, right? Because what separated us from our power, right? Or our wickedness, you see? Yeah, so like, I'm trying to think of this precept. Okay, our, 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 idol our, our idolatry, you see, our going off, our breaking the law, such as the commandments. That's what separated us from our power. See, let me, let me get it real quick. See, and even though, like we always see, even though the Lord got us going through these different things, right? The curse is upon us. Hey, the Lord's about to go and be back one, one again with his servants, man. And who is the servants? The Israelites. You know, that's um, uh, Isaiah 45 and 4, if I'm not mistaken. All right, Zechariah 1 and 15. And I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease. For I was yet, for I was but a little displeased, and they have helped forward the affliction. And I think there was another one too that goes into that, but basically, like, like the the brother, the youngest brother was saying, uh, and though the living Lord be uh, angry with us a a little while for our chastening and correction, yet shall He be at one again with His servants. And right, I'm gonna wait till the bro get the precept. So you can go, you can go ahead, bro. I'll, uh... But thou, O godless man, and of all other most wicked, be not lifted up without a cause nor puffed up with uncertain hopes, lifting up thy hand against the servants of the Most High. 
for thou hast not yet escaped the judgment of the almighty power who seeth all things, man. Mm -hmm. You know? Because, um, yeah, man. Because, hey, man, these Edomites, man, they really think, you know, that the mo that they're going to get away with, with everything that they've done, man. You know? Yeah, I got that precept now. Go ahead, bro. Um, uh, Isaiah 59, verse 1, it says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. See, so that's what separates us from our power, right? And the heathens know that, man, that our, once we continue in wickedness and our, continue to sin against the Lord, that that, you know, forms a separation from our, from our power, man. You see, but they know when we are uh, uh, all in a, on a core and in the right spirit, right, with our power, that we good, man. You see, so they want it to the best of their ability. That's their goal. So you know what? Let's keep Israel, you know, uh, as, as sinning as much as possible. Okay, let let them. Well, let's make it to the point where they love to do it. You see, and we don't even gotta force it upon them no more. Where they just, you know, naturally do it. Every day they get up, they just do it. You see, and but that's what you see now with Jake, man. You see, and now Jake takes pride in sinning. But what we tell him each and every week, right? That if you don't repent, you will be destroyed. That's exactly right, bro. All right. Um, verse uh, Second Maccabees Second Maccabee seven and thirty six. For our brethren, who now have suffered a short pain, are dead under the Most High's covenant of under everlasting life. And back into the other thing we was going into, that if you um you know endure tribulation, he will give you a crown of life, man. But thou, through the judgment of the Most High, shall receive just punishment for thy pride. But I, as my brethren, offer up my body and life for the laws of our fathers, beseeching the Most High that he will speedily be merciful unto our nation, and that thou, by torments and plagues, mayest confess that he alone is the Most High. That's that's the way you uh your heathens are gonna confess, man, by the torments and the plagues that are gonna be flipped on y'all, man. Verse thirty eight. And that in me and my brethren the wrath of the Almighty, which is justly brought upon all our nation, may cease. Then the king being enraged handled him worse than all the rest, and took it grievously that he was mocked. So this man died. Undefiled. Undefiled, right? We always go into you telling you eating un abominable things that defile you, defiles you. But hey, leave it up to a Christian. The Lord cleaned everything. Right. And put his whole trust in Yahweh, man. Put his whole trust, not a half, not 75%, whole trust. Last of all, after the sons, the mother died. Let this be enough now to have uh, spoken concerning the idolatrous feasts. In the extreme tortures, man. You see, everything is written in four times is written for our learning, man. You see, but well, you could just see how cruel this devil wanted our brethren to eat that pork, man. You see, just to go against our power. You uh -huh. see? But you brothers got to keep in mind and even go back and read this uh, story time and time just to show you, you know, that hey, these things may happen to you. You know, this may come upon you. Okay, hey, but you can't fear. You see, you can't, you can't fear what the devil's going to do to you, okay? But this devil's going to be coming down on us. Why? Because, well, great wrath, because he know that his time is short. You uh -huh. see, and he's going to try to do anything, any, anything, right, any way possible to get you to, get you to denounce your how about you shot, man, okay? And, and this just came to mind when the bro was talking about, because, because the Christians are reading certain scriptures. You know, and they just, oh, just pray over it. Or, oh, you know, it ain't the body, the meats that defile the body. Job 14 and 4. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. You can't just all of a sudden pig ain't going to be a, a kosher, man. Right. Not when or the clean. Lord made that particular animal to clean the earth, man. Do, it, do its purpose uh, of, of the eco, ecosystem cleansing process. Yep. Okay. Same with shrimp, crab, lobster, and all right. that, man. They, they, those, these different, yeah, uh, Right, because everything the Lord makes is beautiful and it has its own purpose. Those mm -hmm. those animals or sea creatures and fowls, they're not wicked. Mm -mm. You see, they're just unlawful for us to eat. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. They have a purpose, man. They have their own purpose, right? 
which makes them unclean to you. Right, right. You know, just like Esau, Esau is perfect. He's perfectly wicked. Right. The most I created him to be that way. And he's, he's, he's playing out his role. Right. These different creatures that were made to cleanse the areas. Pigs clean the earth of the trash and the, and the dead, you know, carcasses and, and all the other the rotten food and stuff. Mm -hmm. Shrimp and all these other things, they clean out the, the ocean, man. Yeah. So as they as that younger brother said, younger brother said, man, you know, hey, that his servants, hey, get Isaiah 40, 45 before we can close with that. Right. Hey, that the servant to the Lord is going to be one with their power. Now, who were servants of the Lord? Israelites. Okay, and we are going to be back one with our power in the kingdom, man. Right? In the kingdom, we're going to be back one with our power. The laws and statutes, laws, statutes, and commandments are going to be what? Written in our inward parts. We're not going to go off no more. We ain't going to sin against the Lord. You see? we all going to be in the right mind. You see? But we're going to have to teach the other nations, right, the ways to follow. Why? Because this shows you that. <laughs> this is another way to show you the kingdom ain't for everyone, right? In that standpoint. Because cause y'all going to be in the kingdom, but y'all going to be in, for, in slavery. But... Y'all gonna be still going off because we are gonna have to teach you the ways. Well, us ourselves, as far as our brethren or the Israelite family, we ain't gonna have to teach each other. Right. Why? Because it's gonna be written in our inward parts. But you, on the other hand, y'all left out. Yeah. So where the hell do you get that y'all y'all are part of the new covenant, man? I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. But that's another lesson for another time. Right. Alright, so Isaiah 45 verse 4 says, For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, my elect. So that's what the elect or the elect is, you know, can be Israelites only. Mm -hmm. I have even called thee by name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. Okay, so there you go, man. All right, so we're going to be back uh, uh, in one accord, servants to Yahweh, you know, shot, man, kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Uh, yeah, that's even what the dude, what the, uh, what the younger brother said, you know, he was like, uh, just, you know, just read it real quick if I can find it. Not then I ain't gonna worry about it. You pass it up already. Pass it. Yes. Yeah. Said, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And though the living Lord be angry with us a little while for our chastening and correction, yet shall he be at one again with his servants. That's right. And his right. servants are the nation of Israel. That's man. right. Yeah. We're yeah. gonna be on one accord, like the brother said. We have the law, statutes, and commandments written in our in our heart, and our in, uh, we'll have perfect flesh, incorruptible. You know. We won't be able to go off, man. Right, right. Yep. So hey, that sums it up for that lesson, right? I'm um, going into uh, hey, some of the their, their medieval torture devices, right? Uh, but hey, fear not them which kill the body. Okay, fear not them which kill the body. See, and these are certain things you got to meditate upon because this devil's gonna be coming down with great wrath and with things like this. Okay, so we must got to consider this. See, and there's a lot of these things that we've coming up with, you know, Jake would like to say, y'all fear mongers and all that. No, this is what our people need to know, man. Okay, because this is what's coming, to, more than this, but this is some of the things that's about to come upon our people. And y'all supposed to know that. Know this. You see? Mm. Hey, you know, ultimately, Jake don't know the scriptures, and we we close that after this. If you don't mind. Yep, that's a beautiful preset. You know, because like you said, brother, uh, they, like the brother said, they think we uh, fear mongering. But no, man, you supposed to have fear of the Lord. That's wisdom, man. Yep. Second Corinthians, because the Most High allows all this stuff to go on, man. Yep. Second Corinthians five and eleven, uh -huh. knowing therefore the terror of Yahweh, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto the Most High, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciousness. So you supposed to have that fear of the Lord, and that should guide you to uh, to not want to break His commandments, man. Yeah, but knowing the ter therefore the terror of the Lord. See, we know how Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, get down. You yeah. see, so we persuade men. See, but y'all want to be so used to this, this, you know, uh, uh, the heaven, the, the God of the Bible, right? And his only begotten son, the way that the, these fake pastors and how Esau preaches. Oh, man, that's, that's the wrong, um, uh, characteristics or wrong, um, uh, uh, attributes, you know, that they present to you, but we're presenting to you the right ones. But we're teaching that you need to fear your how why your how shy. Okay, so knowing that, knowing therefore the church of the Lord, we persuade men. Period. Okay. Uh, Close out. All right. Yeah. So with that, we're gonna give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Rakhadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. 
peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopefully elect out there. You know, pushing this word across the uh, the four corners of the earth, right. and also you want you uh, you one third women and children, you know, and believers that listen in in, in uh, sincerity and in truth, man. You know, with that we're gonna say shalom. Shalom.